Thanks. So my name is Zach Rosenberg, and for my project, I used machine learning to see if I could identify safe and unsafe foods for people with IBD to eat. IBD stands for inflammatory bowel disease, and it describes a group of conditions including ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease, and it's characterized by gut inflammation. And symptoms can range from minor stomach annoyances to potentially life-threatening issues, including blockages, fistulas, or even cancer. And while food's relationships with IBD remains understudied and controversial, 57% of people with IBD believe that diet can trigger their symptoms, including food avoid which leads to food avoidance and potentially malnourishment. And because it's understudied, there's no recommendations for people. It's basically thought that uh, your diet is specific to you. I chose this project because it's personal to me. Uh, I was diagnosed about two years ago with Crohn's disease uh, when I had 10 ulcers, which by the way is a lot. Um, <laughs> medication has me ulcer free now, but I'm not symptom free. And I find that eating small quantities of specific foods can cause symptoms that last days or even weeks. So I set out to figure out what foods I could eat and how I could help other people with IBD. And for the sake of time, I'm just gonna focus on the last thing here, which was building a recommendation tool um, for, uh, for people with IBD. The materials I had to work with was a, a pretty small data set, 670 surveys uh, from ibdrelief.com, where you had 250 questions, and you answered on a scale of zero to 10 for each food, zero being never, you could never eat the food, 10 meaning you could always eat the food. And this project was actually my first time using a lot of the data analysis tools in Python, uh, my first time using Jupyter Notebooks uh, and uh, SK Learn and a bunch of machine learning techniques. And specifically, the recommendation tool is built using association rule learning. So I know this isn't a super popular uh, category of machine learning, so I'm gonna go through it real quick. But basically, it's a method for discovering uh, interesting patterns between variables in a large data set. But most importantly, it's human understandable and doesn't require a ton of data. And it's made up of two steps. First is frequent item set mining, which basically you find all the subsets of the combinations of your data that appear frequently, and you set a minimum threshold for that. And then you use that to create rules based on whatever measure of interestingness you're looking at. And there's a, a bunch of them, but the one I used primarily is confidence. And an example rule would be a person who can eat chicken and can eat apples can eat beef with 87% confidence. So nice and understandable. And Within that, I used a specific algorithm called FP growth because frequent item set mining is actually a very complex problem. And if you try and brute force it, uh, mathematically it's creating a power set that's actually exponential. And I tried that at first before realizing it would crash my computer. <laughs> and so I switched to FP growth, which is just quadratic. And it's complicated, but to go through it really simplistically, what you do is iteratively build a compact data structure that you see in the upper right hand corner, little tree looking thing called an FP tree. And from that, you recursively extract your frequent item sets, and it's significantly more efficient. Um, the downside is it's complicated, which sounds weird, and when I first read that, I was like, okay, how hard could it really be? And then I realized almost every single implementation already done in Python is wrong, and I luckily found one because I might have just called it quits <laughs> if I didn't. Um, but the algorithm itself wasn't actually enough to answer my problem, and I had to take a couple semi-novel approaches as well. Association rule learning traditionally takes binary data, but I had logically ternary data. You had three options. You either can eat the food, you can't eat the food, or the person just didn't answer the question. And so the problem is that can create conflicts if you want to be able to answer both what can you eat and what can't you eat. So I might make a rule that says you can definitely eat apples and you can definitely not eat apples. And so I had to figure out how to deal with that. Second, um, association rule learning is inherently self-validating which is awesome, but it, did, it didn't help me compare my model to other models to see which was better. And so I used Monte Carlo cross-validation um, to determine the accuracy so that I could compare it. And this is the, the result of that. For each and every person I tested, I found all of the rules that applied to that person. I resolved the conflicts where possible, and then figured out how many were correct and incorrect to figure out the accuracy of the model. But more, just as importantly, I wanted to figure out how many new recommendations were I actually making to people since the goal of this is to build a recommendation tool. And the results were pretty strong. Um, I was able to make recommendations with usually 90% plus accuracy and an average of 18 to 19 new recommendations per person. And these are real food recommendations like cod and eggs uh, and melon and not just spices that you could add to your diet. 
the full model uh, actually covered 74% of all the possible foods that I was looking at uh, with roughly 900,000 rules generated, which if you look at the figure uh, on the right, that's a hex bin plot to summarize those 900,000 rules uh, based on the interestingness measures like, like confidence. And so with my model in hand, I built the actual recommendation tool, which I call the IBD Elizer. And it takes in uh, the survey data and outputs in the background, this is what the data looks like. The consequent column uh, shows the actual food recommendations. The antecedents are the rules that lead to those recommendations. And then a bunch of summary statistics off to the right. It'll be prettier on the web. Um, and the bottom, I just included that bit of code. It's my favorite bit of code. It just shows the power of pandas uh, group by and aggregation methods. And so in the future, now that I have this tool, I hope to go back to the website and actually integrate it live into the survey so that when people take the survey, they're immediately given recommendations on foods. They can go test them out in the real world, come back with their feedback, say you were right, you were wrong, and continue to improve this model over time, and hopefully help a lot of people eat more confidently. And with that, I'm, I'm at time here, but I do want to give a shout out and thank you to my mentor, uh, Ed Gross, who is hugely helpful in my thought process, and all of my unofficial data science mentors, Chris Gruber, Andra Stance, uh, Stanchu, Laurel Rulin, and of course, Chippy for giving me the kick in the pants I needed to tackle machine learning for the first time. Yeah.